There's no sponsor for this video except me. The sponsor is me. Go follow me on Twitch and watch me play video games sometimes. Okay, thank you. Well, after 60 hours of intense battles and even more intense lectures, I've finally finished Fire Emblem Three Houses and I'm ready to make my review. Honestly, I don't know how to describe this game other than the fact that it filled me with childlike wonder, childlike wonder. The childlike wonder I felt when I played Odyssey with. I felt that childlike sense of wonder I used to get. What do you want me to say? It was incredible, amazing, exciting, lovable, charming. I'll I'll go get a thesaurus if you hate me that bad. <laughs> when I first saw Three Houses revealed at E3 last year, I didn't really have much interest in it, so I stayed pretty out of the loop even leading up to the game's release. Once it came out, I decided to play the game completely blind, and it ended up becoming one of the best JRPGs with elements of turn-based battles mixed with social relationships and school life I've ever played. And there aren't a lot of them, so that's saying something. In case you aren't familiar with the general premise of the game, you're a silent protagonist who starts chatting with a 16 going on fucking 3000 or something year old goddess, because Fire Emblem really likes their age play. She gives you the power to rewind time during battles, so with all the incredible uses you could find for this divine power, what do you do? You head to a monastery and start teaching some rich kids how to fight. Oh, and did I mention that all of these students are very cute? Mary Ann seems nice. She looks a little sad and tired though. I wonder what's wrong. Persona is probably the most well-known JRPG series that uses a calendar system for gameplay, but Fire Emblems feels both unique and incredibly addicting. There is so much content packed into three houses that I was completely immersed in optimizing every free day I was given. I'd spend hours exploring the monastery, chatting with every student and NPC on the map, giving out gifts and lost items, cooking, planting crops, and... Wait, is that... Is that a fishing minigame? Yeah! Oh, oh I'm reeling in a big one! Like, come look at this fucking fish! I don't quite get what it is about fishing minigames, but I just see them and instantly I'm like, yep, yeah, mm, what game? Huh? Story? Sorry, engaging turn-based combat? What is this fire emblem you speak of? It's time to spend over an hour in one sitting just pressing A when two circles overlap. I mean, if a JRPG doesn't have fishing, is it really a JRPG? Honestly, I think I just love any type of real life task in video game form. From picking who to eat with at the dining hall to debating which seeds to plant for the rare crops I needed, every minute I spent during my free days in the monastery was straight up enchanting. Even after talking to everyone and running out of activity points, I would often just sit around and listen to the music instead of going to the next battle. And speaking of battle, it's pretty impressive that I've gone this long and praised the game so much without even talking about the core gameplay of actually doing the turn-based combat. So let's get to that. I adore turn-based combat. I love the mix of strategic tension and immersion without the need for intense reaction times and mechanical skill. As expected, Three Houses excels with its turn-based combat and manages to keep it fresh and exciting with its plethora of classes and skills along with its new battalion and monster mechanics. I usually find myself turning off battle animations in Fire Emblem games, but I left them on in Three Houses because they were actually pretty fun to watch. This may or may not be due to the fact that hearing actual teenagers say cheesy lines after straight up murdering bandits is always enjoyable. You should be honored. No one makes it past me. Well, how was that? You were wide open. The permadeath mechanic in classic mode also adds a fair bit of tension that makes battles a lot more enjoyable. In some strategy games, you can just ram your fighters into the enemy until you win, but after coming to care for the precious students you teach in three houses, making sure none of them die makes you approach battles differently. Luckily, the Divine Pulse feature allows you to rewind to any point in the battle a certain amount of time, so making sure every single one of your students stays alive doesn't require the dreaded process of reloading saves. In one of the earlier fights, my boy Caspar died, so I rewound time and brought some more kids over to help him out, but then he died again like the bastard he is, so I rewound time again. But this time, I brought the entire squad! Alright kiddos, you know the drill, permission to kill on sight, let's get him! The hard difficulty was a pretty gratifying experience. All of the meticulous work I put into teaching, classing, and evenly leveling my students made a lot of the quests in the early game very easy, but there were still a decent amount of challenging missions, especially after the time skip. 
Wait, what? Either I'm a strategic genius, or Fire Emblem Three Houses is too easy. I mean, yeah, like I said, some of the quests are really easy, but permadeath makes you play more carefully, and I'm playing on normal difficulty and the deceptively titled casual mode. But enough about battle, I know we're all really here for the other famous aspect of Fire Emblem, the character development and support conversations. At first I thought the beginning of the game was just heavily voice acted, but then I discovered that every single line and conversation in the entire game has voice acting. Even little things like cutscenes when you order food at the dining hall or when your students learn something new during lectures. It makes the world feel so much more alive and creates more dynamic connections between all of your students. It's one of the first games in a while where I haven't skipped through voice acting to play faster. In addition to the students from each house having full support conversations with each other, they even have conversations with those from different houses in case you recruit them. And they have conversations with the teachers and the main character all voice acted. I came to adore all of the characters in the Black Eagles. They're well written with traits from flirty to chivalrous to comedically evil, and their interactions together were my favorite part of the entire game. I also enjoyed getting to know several other students that I recruited and some of the teachers like Shamir and Manuela. And speaking of Manuela... Well, you're here now, and I do like a man who knows what he wants. Lock the door. I mean like, wow. Okay. Wait just a second. As immersive as Three Houses can often be with its plethora of social aspects, the strange quality and tendencies of the graphics can sometimes ruin the immersion, and it was one of my only real problems with the game. It's not so much the graphical design itself. I think the game could actually look beautiful and keep itself from feeling dated, if the Switch could handle it. You'll just be cooking with someone, and then all of a sudden the Switch decides it can't render two characters and a background image. It uses 360 images of the 3D environments for the support conversations, and sometimes it is just painfully noticeable. All the graphics. All the, all the graphic. I once oh. this home. I have no doubt. You once called a, a 240p image your home? I mean, how does the Switch manage to render stuff like this? But a couple of cell shaded anime girls can knock the console straight onto its fucking deathbed. At least I have this little dude in the loading screen who looks like he's doing a little disco dance and you can make him run around with the tilt controls. I'd say that about makes up for the bad graphics. <laughs> I now want to quickly touch on my thoughts about the Black Eagle storyline while also not spoiling anything. The first half of the game has the classic slow build of an RPG, adding subtle motivation to the already enjoyable gameplay loop of teaching and battling. Tension builds and major story events are accompanied by mood shifts in the music and characters. The story continued to pull me in as it hit a crescendo right before the time skip. I was completely engrossed in everything that was happening. The villain's goals were unknown and there were complex characters with motivations I wanted to discover, but after the time skip in the Black Eagles route, the story's focus completely shifts. I understand that this is related to the route I chose, but I still feel like the story lost some of its potential after a single playthrough. I don't think it was bad per se, it had its share of exciting moments and battles, but it varied greatly from the first half of the game and left a lot of questions unanswered. However, I know that this strange shift was meant to be, as I've been told that it's best to play through all of the storylines to get the most out of the game. I don't currently have the time to play through a game that took me over 60 hours two more times, so I'm just a bit disappointed with how the Black Eagle storyline stands on its own. But I am excited to eventually go back and experience the rest of the content that this game holds. After all, I did get to go fishing, put my tactical RPG skills to the test, and teach a cute opera girl how to murder her enemies with ridiculously powerful black magic. And then I married her at the end of the game, so yeah, you could say I had a pretty good time. Fishing, that is! Woo! See ya, Dorothea, I'm headed right back to the pond!
And finally, I've mentioned it a few times already, but it's tradition in my videos to talk about the music, because I tend to obsess over video game soundtracks. The soundtrack in Three Houses does a fantastic job in making the game's daily life feel inviting and laid back while keeping battles exciting and intense. They mix traditional instruments like horns and violins with electronic drum lines and even dubstep at some points. It's really strange, and yet it works. There are a lot of wonderful tracks, and I highly recommend checking out this game's music, even if you're not planning on playing it. Speaking of the soundtrack, the Collector's Edition actually comes with one. As a collector, I feel like some companies have been kinda skimping out on Collector's Editions recently, but it's nice to finally get a high quality one. And that just about finishes up my thoughts on Fire Emblem Three Houses. While the story wasn't quite everything I hoped it would be in one playthrough, it was still a magical experience that was pushed above and beyond my expectations by the level characters and the addition of the addicting calendar mechanics. Also, as a final side note, I swear there is just something stupidly magical about vocal themes in video games. From Tomorrow Is Mine to Reach Out To The Truth to Gosh Dang Jump Up Superstar, I swear no matter how cheesy the lyrics are or how many times I hear these, they will always get me energized and motivated like nothing else in this world can. And since Three Houses has a cheesy yet amazing vocal theme, that's how we're gonna end this video off. Please. Don't copyright strike me, Nintendo. I look to you like a red rose.